is an advanced package for running tests in Python, but we can use it to manage our test session in native. One important feature of PyTest is something called fixtures. Fixtures allow you to specify the setup of your test suite and customize it to your needs. In this example, we have uh, two accounts that we're two special accounts that we're going to use in our test suite: the owner account and the receiver account. Which, as we see here, are two different indexes in the accounts list. And these are valid over the entire session of the Ape test suite. The way fixtures work is you define a function that takes as input arguments any other fixtures that you might want to use. So in this case, we're using some of the Ape built-in fixtures like accounts. However, you can also reuse fixtures and other fixtures. So here we want to deploy our token uh, as a fixture and use as the base setup of our test suite. And we're going to do it by creating a token fixture, uh, leveraging our owner fixture as an input, then using the eight built-in project fixture. We're going to do a normal deploy from the owner account of the token, which takes no input argument. For the, for the deployment. And this will give us a deployed contract at, uh, this will give us a contract instance uh, named token that we can use in our, in our test suite. So in our test suite, um, you can see that it's very similar to how fixtures work uh, in our contest.py, but here the only difference is every test needs to start with test underscore. It's a function that takes as input arguments, uh, any fixtures you want to use uh, that have been previously set up. So here we're gonna take our deployed token contract and the owner account from when we created the setup. For this first test, we're going to test the initial deployment of the token contract. So we will be making no changes to uh, the contract by calling any methods, just checking view methods to make sure that the outputs are as we expect them to be. For example, um, ERC20 metadata defines a name, symbol, and decimals values that the token should supply in order to tell you um, information about the token. So we have the name, which we expect to be ape token. We have the symbol for the token, and we have the number of decimals it's supposed to take. Additionally, we have some non ERC20 methods like owner that will tell us that our owner account is indeed the owner of the token. Lastly, uh, because we pre-mint a thousand tokens in the deployment of the token contract, um, the total supply and balance of the owner will match those numbers. Um, this test case is important because it shows us that the uh, starting place of the token contract um, is in a good place. It's exactly as we expect it to be. And this is a good foundational case for the other test cases we create, which will have more complex behavior. ERC20 defines a transfer function, which must transfer a certain amount of tokens from one account to another. Here, the owner account is the sender, and we want to show that a receiver, which is a different account, is able to transfer tokens from itself to the receiver account. To start this uh, test, we're going to show that the initial balance of the owner tracked here is a certain amount, and the initial balance of the receiver tracked here is empty. Then we're going to perform the ERC20 transfer function, which comes from a given owner of tokens and sends a specific amount of tokens to the receiver address. An important part of the standard is defining when uh, the transfer logs are emitted. So this is how you would show that a particular number of logs 
have been admitted for this uh, method and have the correct information applied to them. So we're gonna show that um, the token transfer log uh, was admitted during this transaction and there's only one log that occurred and that log's sender was the owner address, the receiver was uh, the receiver address and the amount that was sent was the same amount that we specified there. After the transaction, we want to check that the expected change happened. So here we're going to show that the receiver balance changed from zero to 100, and the owner balance changed from 1,000 to 900, specifying that a certain amount of tokens moved from the owner to the receiver. This is a great example of what it looks like to do a positive test case. Um, so in the test case, we're showing that after performing an action, the expected result occurred. So the expected result here was that the tokens moved from the owner to the receiver. There's other types of test cases which are also very important, which are negative test cases. These show that uh, a function can, uh, cannot occur under the given situation um, that uh, the, the system is currently set up in. Meaning that uh, for this particular example, we want to show that a particular account like receiver cannot spend more than the balance they have. At this point, we know that the receiver has 100 tokens, so it should not be possible to send 200 tokens to another account like the owner. We use the apreverts function to perform this. This uh, context manager, uh, so with apreverts, it means the next a uh, function you call inside of the context manager will revert. So we're calling this transfer of 200 tokens from the receiver to the owner, which the receiver does not have, and verifying that it fits. Lastly, there is a note in the ERC-20 standards specifying that a transfer of zero should still be valid and not fail. So we have this test case here. The transfer from case is a little bit more interesting. So ERC-20 specifies a function called transfer from that shows that an owner can authorize a spender on its behalf to move tokens to the receiver. We'll show this as, as follows. Um, first off, we have a negative scenario that a spender cannot spend any person's tokens unless they've been authorized. So here we're trying to spend, the spender is trying to send tokens from the owner to the receiver account, um, but has not been authorized to do so. So they can't send the tokens, hence it reverts. This next case shows that um, when we call the approve function, we will have allowance to do the previous action and succeed this time. Um, so here, where the owner is specifying a particular spender with an allowance to spend on its behalf. We can look for the approval transaction log here, uh, decode the logs from the transaction, and we should get exactly one log with the owner set that way, the spender set that way, and the amount that they're authorized to spend is 300. Here's the next case. Um, so here we're showing that when calling the transfer from function, the spender is now authorized to send up the 300 tokens on the behalf of the owner uh, to the receiver. So here we're showing that a transfer event occurs, exactly one transfer event from the owner to the receiver of the amount of uh, that we specified. We're also showing that the allowance had decreased from 300 to 100. Um, this next scenario here, we're going to show that um, the spender cannot spend more than they've been authorized to spend. So they've been authorized to spend 300, they spent 200 here in this transaction, and they're trying to spend 200 again, but they're only authorized for 100, so this transaction should fail. In this last function that we call, the spender account is not spending their last remaining allowance um, 
to move the chocolates from the owner to the receiver. So in total, we uh, moved 300 tokens from the owner to the receiver, and the owner started with 1,000. So the difference is that the receiver now has 300 tokens, the owner now has 700 tokens, and the spender doesn't have any tokens because it did not move uh, the tokens to themselves. Now that we have our, all our tests working, we can show that during the test phase, APE will compile the contracts first and then run the test cases that it finds. Uh, so PyTest has a very smart process of identifying and running test cases. And you can actually use any of the PyTest flags uh, to reduce or change uh, how the test is run. For example, we can specify that we only want to run a certain test case by doing the dash K flag. That will uh, apply a filter of proof and only run one case that we selected. Now, if instead we just wanted to run test from one file, we can do it this way by just specifying a test. And it'll run all the test cases in the file. We only have one file, so it'll run all the test cases. Um, there's many other ways that we can see how this works, but let's show what happens when a test case fails. So let's say here, we say that instead of 18 decimals, it's 17 decimals. Uh, well, this would not be the case because the uh, contract says it's 18 decimals, but we will show that this case will fail. When it fails, it'll show um, where it failed in the file and why it failed. Assertion fails will also demonstrate what the call results were. Um, now, if you want to see um, into that test case when it fails, you can use the dash I flag, which is start interactive mode when you're in the test case. So uh, here you can see that when you call a function from the token, you'll get a value. This will have access to all the things in the session. So these are all the things defined in the test session, and you can use any one of these uh, without importing it into the file. To stop using this mode, just type exit, and it will uh, continue with the failure. Th that's how to use the ape test command in order to run your um, test cases written with PyTest um, to execute your test suite of your file. Later to come, we'll show more about how to measure gas and coverage snapshots of your test cases when you run them in a future video.